Hi, and I'm Stacy Davis back with Viaduct Solutions with our workshop on our continuation of anger management. I want to refresh your memory. We talked about the four different anger myths, which we know myths are not real, but because anger exists in our workplace, anger exists in our households. Does anger exist in the church? Yes, it does. Does it exist with your friends? Yes, it does. Do we sometimes want to strangle people? Yes, we do, but that's okay. So we came to say, because it exists in the workplace, we have to figure out how to better manage it. Anger doesn't go away. Everybody experiences anger, anywhere between zero to 10. So zero being minimum, you step on my toe, and man, I'm kinda, you know, upset with you, give it about a two. However, when we hit 10, we talk about these things over here that become aggressive. Aggressive is that 10 mark. So the four, uh, the four myths, though, that we mentioned, I want to refresh your memory, was anger is hereditary. Anger um, gets you what you want. Venting with anger is good. And then we talked about anger always has to lead to aggressiveness. No, anger doesn't. So this brings us right here. The differences between hostility, assertiveness, and aggressiveness. When people sometimes see people walking around and they'd be like, man, that person's just angry. They're not angry. They might just be hostile. Hostility is when you're casting these negative judgments on someone and or things or places for absolutely no reason. Can it lead to aggressiveness and assertiveness? Yes, it can. Okay. So then we want to talk about assertive. Assertive is drawing that line. It's a neutral standpoint. I'm going to draw this line. I said, do not take my favorite cupcake because it's mine. So you take my cupcake and I'm a bit angry. That might be at like a five on the meter. Don't forget we go to 10, explosive. So, but drawing the line is you come and you ask me again and I said, no, I do not want you to take my favorite cupcake because I need that cupcake in my life. In any case, so then we talk about aggressiveness. Aggressiveness is when we hit that 10. That 10 is an explosive area. That means we have verbally or physically done something that has caused harm or danger to oneself and or someone else. Hitting the walls, punching out people, cussing people, calling people names that are not their own names. This is aggressiveness. So, now that we understand the difference there, let's go ahead and talk about it. The five core management skills we learn. Does anybody remember what we talked about? Anybody? Okay, well, there's five tools. These tools can become skills. Learning how to better manage our anger is what the goal is. Again, it does not go away. I promise you. Do you want to strangle people often? Yes, I do. When your kid is throwing a tantrum and you are not going to give them what they want, do you get angry? Yes, you do. Do you need to take a time out? Yes, I do. Sometimes a time out, guess what? Adults take time outs too. It's one of the skills. But let's look at the ones that we were working on last week. Okay, there we go. There's a little girl with her sister. Does this look familiar? Yes, I know that was me and my brother sometimes. So we learned about these tools. Recognizing stress, tool number two, developing empathy. Tool number three, respond instead of react. Tool number four, change the conversation with your self-talk. And tool number five, to communicate assertively notice assertively and not aggressively that means i'm going to draw the line so when we talk about recognizing the stress at the point you get angry and you realize something's off this is when you want to use those tools we mentioned before taking a time out taking a walk perhaps exercising going sitting in your favorite place and enjoying the outside sound crazy it does but guess what it takes us from not exploding into those things and saying those things that we will be regretful of later so we want to be cautious on that. And then when we talk about empathy, well, what's empathy? We learn the difference in empathy and sympathy. I can have empathy and put myself in your same position. So if you're angry about something and you come at me foul, and I come and I say, you know what? I can understand what you're going through. Let me figure out a solution. Let's work through this together. Okay? You have to develop it. Some people don't know what it is. You have to look it up. This would be in another workshop. But I want to just give you these tools so we can work on these things and we'll get back to you on the next session. Respond instead of react. What does that mean? Respond, react. Respond, react. Something explodes. 
instantly I'm going to react or respond. I'm going to react if I wasn't expecting it. I don't believe this just happened. If I respond, I'm going to say, you know what? I remember a time when this would happen before. I have a plan. First, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this and this. Responding allows you to have a plan to do what it is you need to do so that you also don't reach that 10 on the anger meter. So then we go over here to tool number four. Change the conversation with your self-talk. What is self-talk? It's not crazy. It's talking to yourself. It's saying, okay, Stacy, you can do this. You got this. You're bigger than this situation. It's just a problem. What are the possible solutions? Positive self-talk. We're not talking about negative self-talk. Clearly, we're not going to say, gosh, you're dumb. Why can't you do it right? This is what we used to do back in the day, perhaps. Positive self-talk says, I know I can do it. I just need a minute. Let me lay my cards on the table and examine all this, okay? So, we want to change the conversation with your self-talk. Tool number five, communicate assertively. And again, assertively is where we talked about drawing that line. You have to learn how to talk to people. Guess what? You don't have to have an attitude. It doesn't mean that you go around smiling like, yes, everything's so beautiful and how are you? And you're having the worst day of your life. This is not what's going to happen. What I am saying is you can draw that line that says, look, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm at. Give me a little space while I get through the situation. And guess what? The other party can learn to respect that and walk away. This is the time where you can take these breathers. This is the time where you can take a walk. This is the time where you can sit there, like I said, and sip on your favorite Starbucks. I hear Starbucks calling my name. But until the next time, there are three more tools. I am not going to go into full details. I just wanted to give you a snippet of Viaduct Solutions. We offer workshops from anger management, criminal thinking. We do criminal history, gang enhancement. We have law enforcement. Soft skills is my major. My PhD is in soft skills. So this is where my focus is. But right now, I wanted to give you some information that will help you along the way. Thank you.